let's get into news. Okay, here we go. This is a funny one for me because, again, we don't get opportunities to talk about current events very, very often. Mm -hmm. But this is something where our worlds collided. And uh, it's just funny to me because I remember this particular piece of gear being around back in the day and it being thoroughly unimpressive. Yep. And uh, so this whole thing kind of a joke, actually. Super. Oh, yeah. yeah. Super funny to me. This week or this past week, Josh Scott of JHS Pedals fame made a video where he put the Digitech Bad Monkey Overdrive against pretty much every major dirt box on the market, including a Klon Centaur. Yeah. And he's got a talent for making things sound good. And so he knows how to make any gear sound as good as it possibly can. And he provided a compelling case that uh, this distortion box, which retails for like 30 bucks, yep. was worth purchasing. And the funny thing was, is that like, I remember when they were blowing these things out back in the day for like $19, $17, like you couldn't get rid of them. But now, because they haven't been in production in a while, people have started taking these garbage pedals and they're putting them on all of these resale sites for insane amounts of money. Because of this video that showed that they could be set up under ideal studio situation to sound an awful lot like these famous pedals. I mean, he had like an AB switcher box that was toggling back and forth between the multi-thousand dollar artisan Klon Centaur and this $30 bad monkey. And by God, they sounded a lot alike. I'll give it to them. And so what happened on the secondary market is insane. And I'm actually on Reverb's website. They did a uh, they did an article on it. And they were using their price guide and their completed purchase history mm -hmm. to show the, the kind of trending. And over the past year, they were going from anywhere from like $20 to $45 on the low end and maybe like 90 bucks in the high end. And then literally in a week, you have them going for 200, 225. And these are these are sales, right. like they purchased them for that price. Right. Cause I mean, some people are putting them up for like 500, 600 bucks. I don't think any of those have necessarily gone through, but people did make a insane profits on these pedals. Uh, and again, they're fine, I guess. They're not anything worth writing home about. But the interesting thing is, and this happened just today, because of this crazy demand frenzy for this pedal, Digitech is putting them back into produ production. Wow. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. And I'm fairly certain that is a huge mistake. Yeah. But I guess we shall see. I mean, that being said, if they start selling them again for the price that they were selling them for back in the day, maybe they'll sell a whole bunch crap load of them maybe Who knows maybe but if they think they're but gonna if they get, try to like yeah if they're gonna get 200 for them eh, yeah i surely would not go down that road no and listen you know we both have modelers that have some of the most iconic and best sounding gear in guitar history yep does the quad cortex have a bad monkey drive that you no can choose? no no it doesn't it doesn't hmm. it doesn't yeah, there's not one in the in the Helix either. Yeah, yeah. That must mean it's boutique. So I'm calling it now. Mm. Write this down for future reference. April Fool's Day is right around the corner. True. How many of these amp modeling companies say that they're coming out with a new version that includes <laughs> a bad monkey? <laughs> Could be none, but if one of them does it, I demand credit. It seems like something Line 6 would do. Yes. Based on their track record, it is well within the realm of possibility. Yeah. And I mean, Josh is legendary for this kind of crap. He does something in, about what he considers an underrated pedal, and all of a sudden these things mm -hmm. uh, shoot up in price. He did another one in April of last year with the Digitech DF7. And again, it's just a digital distortion pedal. It's not anything yeah. wild. But um, they were initially going for fairly reasonable prices. You're looking at like 100 bucks, 90 bucks. And then he makes a video about them and then they just shoot up in value. And, it, and it's still going on. I just looked up the DF7s that are currently on Reverb right now. And it's like 170, 190, 200. He's got the ability to, um, to goose the market. And you know what? I'm going to say one other thing and I'm going to call out another creator. I don't know if that's cool or not. 
But uh, Trogli's guitar show is, I think, solely responsible for increasing the resale cost of a lot of huh. Gibsons, specifically the Goddess series that was from like the early 2000s and the one that I've been looking for, that SGZ. He's done videos on both of them. And after he did that, all of them either became insanely expensive or they just don't show up on reverb anymore because you know people just buy them up immediately so that's more of a personal thing like i actually i like trogly stuff i i watch his videos all the time but it's just like i'm just mad personally because <laughs> every guitar that from gibson that i think is cool he, he does one video about them and all of a sudden you can't get them anymore Jerk. so i i feel two ways about it yeah 